Today we will be covering the uh, topics like measure of central tendency, okay, measure of dispersion, uh, skewness and kurtosis, okay, clear? So, right, okay. So then first thing is measure of central tendency. It is very important term because uh, actually measure of central tendency is basically used to impute a few, uh, I mean, things in uh, data science and data analytics. Like whenever a missing entity appears, we usually use to impute that particular entity with the help of measure of central tendency. It actually represents the central value of the complete thing, okay, complete data, whatever is there with us. It actually represents the central value of it. Like in case of mean, median, and mode, they are actually uh, used depending upon the requirement based on the data set that we are having. Okay. And actually, um, mean is normal average only. Whatever entities is there in the total, mean is actually the average of it. Median is somewhat different. It is a positional average, we can say. And mode is uh, corresponding to the categorical column. Okay, that I will tell you. Now, uh, the next thing is mean. Mean is actually sum of all observation divided by number of, number of observation. As we actually do in case of average and all. For example, if uh, average score is 85. So, sorry, if your score is 85 in a particular game or in any uh, exam like that, okay, but the average sco score of the entire team is 65, then that means that your performance is really good, right? You are, I mean, um, pe uh, people will be proud of you, right? So, that is what is called average. Average shows the, I mean, sorry, average actually shows the sum of or everybody's score divided by number of people in the that particular team. So that is 65 and your score is 85. So this is showing that you are a, uh, you are one of the very best uh, team person in that particular team. Okay, so it reflects that thing. That is one thing. Next thing is that if your uh, complete data set is not having that much outliers, very less outliers are there or uh, outliers is approximately null. So in that case, you will be taking mean. I will tell you what outliers are. Okay. So that is what is called mean. Okay. Now moving on to the next thing. Some advantages and disadvantages are there in mean. Uh, mean is actually used for both continuous and discrete data. Okay. It is one of the best central tendency. And this is the equation of mean. Like what is the sum of all person's score divided by number of people who are there in the team? The same thing. Okay. But it is very much affected by the external observation and it cannot represent data consisting some of the three points means outliers only. Okay. Outliers means the values that are totally different from the distribution. It is, uh, I mean, completely different from it. I will tell you that thing. Okay. So this is regarding mean. Now, uh, median is actually the middlemost observation. Okay. Uh, I mean, if uh, there are n observation, for example, and if n is odd in number, for example, there are 99 observation. Okay. 99 observation is there. That means n is equal to 99. So the middle observation is actually 99 plus 1 divided by 2. That is 50th observation. But if n is even, that is if n is 100, okay, then 100 divided by 2, that is 50, plus 100 divided by 2 plus 1, that is 51. 50 plus 51 divided by 2, that particular observation is actually median. Okay, understood my point? But it, but the problem with median is it, the, it can't be used for categorical kind of columns, categorical kind of value or data. So that is its disadvantage. What is the disadvantage of mean all of you? It is very much affected by the extreme observation, outliers and all. So that's why we are using mean uh, median when a uh, lot of outliers are there. Who is this? Okay. 
so uh, that is the problem with mean but when we are using mean uh, median in place of mean that problem can be sorted but the issue occurs when uh, yeah when that particular column is categorical in that case we can't use mean or median we should use mode in place of that okay so mode is actually uh, the thing that a value is appearing how much times okay that uh, i mean uh, and which value is appearing most often time that is taken as mean me uh, sorry mode uh, here it will be clear to you like if these are the entities in the data there is a numerical column okay like 2 5 8 4 4 2 2 okay and what is the average of it will give you mean like 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 divided by total number of number data is 7 in number right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this many entities divided by seven that is simple average will give you this value okay but in case of median what happens you know we have to arrange that particular uh, data in an ascending order and since it is seven in number it is odd in number right so mm -hmm. so what was our formula seven plus n plus one divided by two that's why 7 plus 1 divided by 2 will give you 4. That means fourth observation is the median. What is the fourth observation? It is 4. Right? So that's why median is 4. But when we are uh, actually telling about mode, in that case, we can say 2 is the mode because 2 is appearing most number of times. Right? So that's why 2 is mode. Is it clear what is mean, median, and mode? Yes, I'm clear. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we will actually use it according to the need. If our column is numerical and it is not having any extreme values or outliers, we will be using mean in order to impute the missing values. Okay. And if our column, numerical column, uh, is having outliers, then we will be using median. And if our column is categorical, it's not numerical, then we will be using mode to impute the missing values. Clear, everyone? What is the use of statistics in data science and data analytics? It is clear, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, now this is the R program code. Those who are familiar with R program, they can use this particular code. I will send this PPT in your groups, okay? You can try out this thing. Like uh, you can find out the same thing, mean, median, mode, by giving the same values. These are that those values. You can give it in this particular code and you can get the output as this one. Okay. R Studio is used for programming. Okay. You can, you, uh, I mean, if you know Python programming, you can try the same thing for that too. Okay. Now, next is measure of central tendency. So, in case of measure of central tendency, actually, it, uh, I mean, measure uh, measure of sorry measure of central tendency is already done measure of central tendency actually tells you something about the middlemost value or the value which represent the entire data set dispersion is actually a state of getting dispersed or spread like a scatter all the data is spread it, like that okay and it tell you something about that spread Actually, statistical dispersion is extent to which numerical data is likely to value about the average of the central value. That means mean is the central value. How much the distribution is varying from that particular point is actually the statistical dispersion, right? You understood my point? Central tendency means central value, okay? Sta statistical dispersion means how much the numerical data is actually varying from that particular point. It is the measure of that thing. Okay. It shows that how much your data is stable with respect to the central value. Central value may be mean, median, mode. Okay. So, actually the thing is that uh, if the observation is very much, very less deviating from the central values, then it is very much stable. For example, this observation you can see. See, in case of observation 1, 100, 100, 100, 100. All the values are 100. Okay. So, the deviation is very less. What is the average of it? Average of first observation. What is the average? Everyone, please tell me. What is the 100. average? 100. 100. Okay. 
So uh, average is 100 and none of the data points, 100, 100, 100, they are not deviating from it. Deviation is very less. Deviation is almost zero, right? Not almost zero, it is exactly zero. So that shows that the data is quite stable, isn't it? But when uh, actually the data points are 1, 1, 2, and 4, 9, 6, what is the average, all of you? Average means what? 496 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. 125. Some no, about all of the 125. 125, correct. Okay. 500 divided by 4, that is 125. Okay. So, but 125 is very much uh, far from 1, 2 and 496, isn't it? All of you. It is very much deviating. Middle point is very much far away from 1, 2 and 496, All right? Isn't it? So, the that particular observation is very much deviating from the central value. I mean, whatever data points are there, their deviation is very high compared to the central value. Right? So, actually, dispersion calculates that thing, that how much the data is stable. Okay? Understood, everyone? Yes. Okay. So measure of dispersion is actually measure. Uh, I mean, as measure of central tendency uh, is not, uh, I mean, adequate for us to describe the entire data set. So we need measure of dispersion also. And the entities that comes in this particular measure of dispersion are uh, range, interquartile range, standard deviation, and variance. Here, interval quartile range is very important to tell you the concept of outliers. Okay. So, range is actually the difference between lowest and highest value. That's it, nothing else. Interquartile range is the range of values that resides in the middle of the score. For example, this is the box plot. Okay. This is the distribution of data. And this is the middle value. This is the central uh, tendency, median. Okay. Actually, with respect to median, we are measuring how much the data is stable. And the value uh, Q1 and Q3 are actually quartile range. I mean, Q1 and Q3. This is Q2. Median it should be. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, because there is two times. I thought it should be quartile two. That's why I got confused. No, no, it's uh, Q1 only. Uh, if median median is actually 0.5, then Q1 is actually 0.25 and Q3 is 0.75 like that. Okay. Okay, okay. That's why we used to uh, say it as Q1, Q3 like that. And always we will take the uh, median as the central value in case of box plot. Sometimes mean, median, everything will be same only when the data is quite normal. So, in that case, uh, we can take mean also. But generally, we will take uh, median only. Okay? I mean, median is the correct entity. Is it clear, everyone? Quartile actually divides the number of data points into four parts. Uh, that is the thing. Okay, like Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Yeah, that's what I was telling. Yeah, yeah, correct. And actually, Q1 is defined as the middle number between the smallest number and the median. Like, uh, this, uh, like, uh, it is, uh, we can say that uh, median, I, I mean, uh, it is also known as lower or 250th empirical code. That is somewhat complicated. You don't think about it. It is 25 percentage of the data. Uh, I mean, um, uh, the 25 percentage of the data that is below uh, median is uh, comes under Q1 only. And 50 percentage of data corresponds to Q2. 75 percentage of the data uh, corresponds to Q3. Okay. Like whatever 75, per, uh, like the values which are below to 25 percentage will this is the cutoff and the values that lies below 25 percentage is over here. Okay. 
this is the 50 percentage of the total data and the values that is 75 percentage above relies over here is it clear everyone like it is showing you the distribution only with respect to this graph also okay this is 50 percentage and this is somewhat 25 percentage is it clear everyone yes 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 okay so actually iqr is the interquartile range and it is used to find the outliers of the data okay outliers as i already told you that if your data set is having outliers then instead of mean you should choose median in order to impute the missing entities in your data set okay so actually outliers is often used to find the uh, sorry iqr is often used to find the outliers and here uh, the i mean range of outlier uh, i mean that particular range is defined as the values which uh, the data points that lies uh, below q1 minus 1.5 iqr this is iqr actually q1 minus q3 is actually iqr understood q1 my uh, so, uh, sorry sorry q3 minus q1 is iqr okay so by just uh, taking the difference of these two values we will be able to find the iqr and when you will uh, subtract, uh, I mean, 1.5 into IQR from Q1, you will get actually the, uh, I mean, lowest limit of IQR. The values which lies, uh, which uh, I mean, which is less than this particular limit is termed as uh, outliers. And the values which is more than, I mean, which lies outside this particular limit is called as outliers. You understood my point, whichever value is lying outside this particular range, this range. The minimum value is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR and the maximum value is Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. And whichever value lies within this range and this range, they are termed as outliers. Clear everyone? Yes, yes. Is it clear? Yeah. So if in our, uh, I mean, distribution, such types of, uh, I mean, such data points are there, which is lying uh, below this particular range, below this particular range, or above this particular range, then we will take it as outlier. Okay. So actually, at that very moment, we yes, will use God. median. Yeah. When we are taking a, for example, uh, a particular column is having some missing entities, okay? And if we want to impute that particular missing entities with something else, okay? So we should understand that what is the distribution of it. When we will check the distribution or we will check the box plot of that particular column. And if some uh, points are lying uh, at this particular portion or at this particular portion, then it will show us that some outliers are there. So we should not take mean to impute those missing values. We should take median instead of it. Clear everyone? Understood yes. what I'm saying? First, if uh, you have to check the box plot, box plot will give you a clear idea whether there is some outliers or not. Okay. So next thing is variance. Actually, it is the measure that how data point vary from the mean. That's it. Okay. And standard deviation is actually a uh, square root of it that we already know. This is the formula for that. Okay. The basic difference between both is that standard deviation represents the same unit um, as mean of data while variance represents squared unit of it. That is the only difference. Okay. So the... Formula also shows you in case of population, this is the formula. In case of sample data, this is the formula. Okay. And this is the R program corresponding to it. Right. And next thing is skewness, uh, skewness, sorry. 
it is actually the degree of asymmetry observed by the uh, probability distribution that deviates from the symmetrical normal distribution. Actually, it shows you that whether your uh, data is normally distributed or it is left skewed or right skewed. That I will show. I will show that particular distribution to you. Too. Okay. Next thing is kurtosis. It it actually shows you that how much uh, the I mean defines how heavily. Uh, the tail of the distribution differs from the tail of the normal distribution. Sometimes the tail will be very much, uh, I mean, it will be very much peaked. Sometimes it will be flat. So it shows you whether it is uh, nearby the normal distribution or not. Here, skewness actually measures the symmetry and kurtosis actually determines the heaviness of the distribution tail. So the difference will be shown by this images. Like this is the particular distribution which is very much symmetrical here mean median mode everything is same only okay but when uh, i mean this kind of thing comes now like in positively skewed distribution at this very moment uh, mean will be greater than mean is greater than median and median is greater than mode so this is positively skewed distribution and this is negatively skewed distribution where mode is greater than, mode is appearing over here, okay? Mode is greater than median and median is greater than mean. Mode actually tells you that how many times a particular data point is getting repeated. That's why whichever peak value is there, that is actually mode only, okay? Is it clear, everyone, what is positively skewed distribution, what is negatively skewed distribution, what is symmetry distribution? Clear? Yes. Okay. So this is regarding skewness only. Okay. Now regarding kurtosis, this is the graph. Okay. Mesokurtic is actually the normal distribution. Okay. The moderate distribution where it is uh, appropriate, actually kurtosis is three. Okay, when it is greater than three, that means it is very much peaked like this. Okay, and if it is flat graph like this, then kurtosis is less than three and it is called platycurtic, like flat, plat. Okay, remember like that, platycurtic means flat graph where kurtosis is less than three. And leptocurtic means peaked one. Okay. Is it clear, everyone? So, this is regarding kurtosis. Right. Uh, and this is its R programming. You can try out this thing. I will send this thing to, uh, I mean, uh, wait a second. I will show a few. I mean, I will check once whether code is there with me. In Python, there was a few code uh, which will help you to understand that where you will use it. Okay. In case of machine learning and all, it will be helpful for you. So let me check whether the code is there with me or it is in other system. Okay, this is a particular uh, program. Here I am using the imported libraries like Pandas in order to open the file, NumPy in order to do complex calculation, no, no, no. Matplotlib to do the uh, Matplotlib and Seaborn is basically for data analysis and plotting things. Okay, so I am going to run it and this is some house price prediction train data. Okay, so let us run this one too. And this is actually DF is the data set. Okay, there is a CSV file in which some house price uh, data is there. And when you will check out the, uh, I mean, uh, sample of it, you can see this thing. Okay. Uh, these are all related to data cleaning. If you want, I can take next session related to it. 
like how to impute uh, things with need median mode the most important thing uh, correspond um, no it is not there okay wait a second i will check once again whether outla uh, i mean wait 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 Actually, there was a particular code in which uh, box plot was shown. Okay, I will check out whether it is there or not. If possible, I will try to explain it. Okay, main medium mode. Yes, I got it. So I was telling you, like in box plot, we can see the outliers, right? So this is the place where, uh, I mean, this is the box plot, okay? You can see. These are some columns of this particular data set. This is Titanic data set in which uh, passenger ID, people who survived, what were their class, name, sex, uh, age, those kind of things are mentioned, okay? And somewhere, uh, some data is missing. Like you can see in case of age, data is missing. In case of cabin, also data is missing. In case of embark, also data is missing. Okay. So, um, actually at this particular place, uh, it was not that important. And it is actually deleted from it. It is dropped from it. Hello. So, guys, actually, this uh, this particular cabin is not that important. So that's why it is removed from it. Now, what columns are remaining are age and. Okay, so you can see uh, this particular column age and this particular column uh, that is embarked, they are having some missing values, right? So we need to check that how they look like, what is their box plot kind of things. Okay, so age is having some outliers. You can see this is the box plot. Okay, and here some outliers are there. Is it visible to all of you? Everyone? Yes, yes. So this is how we can find it. Uh, box plot is actually used to find the outliers. Okay, we can write, we can use this uh, C bond SNS dot box plot and we have to mention the data set need. Okay, and this is how we can find the outliers. So it shows us that if we want to impute the missing values corresponding to each, then we should not use mean, we should use median. Okay, clear everyone? So that's why median is used. You can see in the code. Okay. Here median is taken. Clear everyone? Uh, yeah. And for it's... embarked, you took mode. Yeah. So here, uh, and also class is checked and based on that too, actually it is done. So, Whenever this kind of outliers is occurring, these points are actually showing you the data points which are outside the uh, this particular limit. Q minus 1.5 IQR and Q plus 1.5 IQR. This value is outside that particular limit. So it is considered as outliers. Here also you can see outliers are there. So that's why in order to replace the missing entities corresponding to this particular columns, we will be taking median. Clear everyone? What is the application you understood now? Why we are using statistics in data, or data science or data analytics? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, one more uh, application, I mean, many applications are there, not only one. This is one of the application of statistics over there. Uh, we can use correlation also. Like, uh, I will show you another example. 
uh, wait. Let me check whether that program is there with me or not. Okay, actually, right now in uh, my, I mean, Jupyter notebook, it is not there. I will check my GitHub and I will tell you. Wait a second. Okay, guys, so let me check. Uh, actually, one more concept is that uh, whenever there is a correlation between two columns, it, uh, uh, we can eliminate any of the those. Okay. Mm. Features, okay. Okay, so this is another uh, code you can see. Here, actually, what I'm doing, many columns are there. You can see many columns are there. Okay, when huge number of, we need a lot of records. Actually, that will improve our uh, processing and all. But uh, if many columns are there, if we are able to eliminate a few of them, that will actually improve the accuracy of our model. Okay. It, uh, not accuracy of the model, sorry. Actually, it will uh, decrease the time of processing. So we should actually look whether we can eliminate some columns or not. Rows are required. You don't uh, delete rows. Delete rows only when 20%, more than 20% of the data is missing in a particular col column. Okay. Uh, and uh, here you can see like... Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, I mean, uh, heat map corresponding to the entire data set. Okay, wherever, uh, I mean, there is a correlation more than 70 percentage, like here you can see 0.74. Okay, this value itself will tell you wherever light color is there, na, it is more than 70 percentage, like 0.94. So we can eliminate those two columns because they are very much uh, similar to each other. So we don't need both of them, we can eliminate any of them. That is where statistics again plays a role. Okay. Hello, ma'am, can yeah. you uh, explain me about the heat map, how to understand the heat map and why we use a heat map yeah, uh, heat uh, comparison map to actually, other map? Yeah. yeah, here heat map is used to find the correlation between different variables like mean radius, mean texture, mean parameter like that many uh, entity many uh, columns are there okay the same column is repeated here too and actually the the correlation between them is uh, taken so he, this particular white colored one means the same column it is uh, this you can see uh, like worst fractal dimension is correlated with uh, uh, this yeah same 
first fractal dimension. Okay. This is the value corresponding to this particular line and this particular line. The correlation between them. Since they are the same thing only, that's why it is white in color. It is completely correlated. No? One call, the same column is actually being uh, made to correlate with other. So that's why it is showing one. Now, worst symmetry is actually um, this uh, correlation between worst fractal dimension and worst symmetry is checked. Then we can see it is 0.54. So we should not eliminate it. They are totally different. Okay. Hello, uh, ma'am, you are not audible. Okay, sorry, sorry. So this, this particular thing actually shows the correlation between worst fractal dimension and worst concave dimension. It is 0.51. Okay, here you can see the uh, fractal dimension and worst, uh, this is mean fractal dimension and this is worst fractal dimension. Correlation between them is 0.77. So we can eliminate any one of them from the data set because they are very much correlated to each other. Is it clear? Okay, ma'am. Looking the scale also, you can, uh, I mean, uh, find out easily that which particular things are correlated to each other. Check out the light colored, uh, I mean, boxes only. So you can easily identify which particular columns are very much correlated to each other. Based on that, you can drop them later. Okay. They are actually, uh, what is done is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here you can see this is the user-defined function in order to eliminate the columns, uh, I mean, in order to eliminate the columns which are having correlation more than 70 percentage, that is 0 0.7. This is that particular user-defined function. And using that user-defined function, those uh, unwanted columns are eliminated. And now, uh, I mean, 